And those are some of the stories in the headlines. Let's now go back to our story on the Suleja Correctional Center, what happened over the week. And, of course, joining me on the show is uh, Chidi. Uh, Mr. Chidi, good morning. Can you hear me, Mr. Chidi? Hello, Mr. Chidi. Hello. Hello. Hello, Mr. Chidi, can you hear me? Okay, so we'll get back to Mr. Chidi as we look at some of the things and, of course, how this would not happen again, uh, what happened over, uh, over the Suleja Correctional Center and of all of these things that happened. How we can mitigate against them, it is very, very important uh, that uh, the, the Suleja Correctional Center issues never happen again. Of course, uh, the, the Correctional Center has been uh, built for over 100 years. So uh, the government should be looking into this construction in, of that particular uh, Correctional Center. Now let's uh, go to bullying. The issue of bullying continues uh, to be ongoing conversation that needs to be addressed according to some experts. Since the outreach that followed the viral video of the bullying, at uh, the lead school uh, British in Abuja. Some reactions have continued to, not only through the incident, but also other incidents that were uh, in the public domain before now. Many Nigerians took to social media to also speak about their own experience in the school. The widespread reaction to, this, uh, to the video has highlighted the need to examine the extent of bullying in Nigerian schools. According to research, about 246 million children and adolescents globally are exp uh, reported to experience bullying yearly and in Africa. Some studies have reported varying rates of 25%, 44.5%, and 6 to 2.8%. In Nigeria, the rates reported to us has been 33.1%, 85%. World over, secondary school students are bullied by peers with resultant harmful effects such as school results, mental health pro pro problems, vicious exhibition of bad behavior, among others. The various laws of our country, the criminal code of the various states, and the criminal procedure of states are against anybody who imposes fear or assault, irrespective of where, whether or not they are student. Corbin bullying requires a holistic approach from all concerned, especially uh, the parents who are the responsibility of the nurturing the children. And, words. and for the government to put a mechanism in place to ensure that Nigerian schools are free of violence. Interesting. And of course, it's a topic for us to look at. Joining me live uh, for this discussion as a school owner, Olushola Bankole. Thanks for joining me on the show. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Juan. It's a pleasure to be here. I think this is one of the uh, most recent uh, occurrences that we've been seeing in schools nowadays, uh, you one will wonder what exactly was going on. You look at the, the conversation around bullying, how some people think that the issue needs to be urgently addressed. Uh, but, you know, a few others say it's a way of, like, you know, to mold children into the real world of things. But what, in your own opinion, is actually the issues we're facing here? All right. Um, definitely. The problem, foundationally, is poor family values, societal values. That's a problem. I mean, if we, if we have our values rightly placed and followed, definitely. I mean, some of the, it may happen once in a while and maybe in significant um, um, kinds, but not such as, you know, as violent and um, maybe impacting as the ones we see around. You know, if the values of a society, our national values in, in this sense, and then that of the, the most minute part of a society or a community, which is a family, is not properly placed. If it is more about um, how do, what do society think I am, how do I make more money, and all of that, without considering character development, 
that will be a lot of, we'll keep seeing this, you know, we have talked about it. Over time, it keeps coming and coming and coming. And if you look at this particular case, it's related issues, okay? If we look at the individual children concerned, including the bystanders, the, the ones that were taking the video coverage, those that were there watching, and possibly even some of the staff, because it, one of the girls mentioned a staff who came across, I mean, came around to say what was happening. Possibly couldn't even offer anything you will definitely know that the value system of such individuals stemming from the family and then considering the societal values are very well, I mean, very misplaced. That's the problem. So, I, I, you know, when you talk about family values, it, it looks as if when this thing happens, the parents of the bullying child, I'm just using general word, defend, defend like, okay, what is happening here? But Looking at it, how do we begin to address some of these issues right from the right from the family value system? Because a child does just not doesn't just wake up and say he or she wants to be a bully. Something must have happened somewhere. Is it that he or she has seen it with the parents or somebody who is a caregiver to to him or her? How do we begin to address all of these issues? Yeah, you see, all of us, every stakeholder, the school, the school system, the educational system entirely, parents. You know, be before anyone even become a parent, and this time around, possibly going back to even these young people, we need to train them on what it takes to be a parent. Being a parent is not just bringing forth a child. Oh, I get pregnant, and then I go to hospital, and boom, a child is here. All right, all I just need to do is to get money, get, you know, things to give the child, uh, you eat, you go to school, that's, no, 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 no. And therefore, it is necessary. Knowing that, okay, we are also handling Gen Zs, that's what they are called. Um, there are different, there are dynamics that are required in training them. So parents need n knowledge in parenting. It's not assuming that, ah, all I, you know, don't do this, you can no, there, there are a lot of structures, and good enough, we have a lot of um, parenting academies and organizations all around. For us as a school, of course, I'm, I'm an educator, we involve some of those uh, parenting organizations to even come talk to our parents. And as well, we have structured procedure where, you know, the policies of the school are made clearly known and understood and agreed to by the parents. And part of those policies involve the issue of parenting, how to parent, what, what does it entail, what are the things you should, you know, from when they are very young. Okay, let me give you an instance. When children are really young, say like a two, three, four, they want to join you in the kitchen to cook, they want to help you to cut things, and most parents will say, oh, it's dangerous, don't let them come near. No, that's not how to parent. You need to get them engaged at that time, at their level. Of course, you won't give a child a sharp knife. There are plastic knives. You can give the child a piece of tomato on a small plate. Let the child cut as you are doing your own. That child is learning some values that I need to do this. Because when they are getting to an age, especially towards teenage, they don't want to do those things. That's when you want them to do it. And it but when you have groomed them to be doing some of those things at the early age, when they are getting to that age when they don't even want to do it, that's why the Bible, for instance, says, train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he won't depart. A lot of us start to parent children when it's too late. And like you mentioned, some of those children had seen issues, had, had problems, you know, seen all those things in the in, maybe with their own parents, maybe father eating the mother or mother eats because that is both ways nowadays, you know. If that child grows in that environment, you will expect, you know, some bullying, some violence from that child. As a matter of, maybe not even because the child intrinsically wants to do it, but because environment matters to a child. Same thing. I said the society is also guilty, including the government. We see a lot of ways that even government is bullying Nigerian citizens. We need to stop it. We need to look at it. Government agencies... Would, I was reading an article this morning on a social media platform. When someone is reporting that Oro should, should keep bus stop, 
there is a problem. There is a, like five lanes of parking, you know, to drop passengers. Yeah. Two are for uh, private, three are for um, uh, public transport, yeah. commercial vehicles. But some, you, and the positioning is so hidden that you may not see it yeah. well, especially when you are driving a car. And then you enter, you feel, okay, this is car, I mean, bus stop or car park. Yeah. And you park, and the people are there to come pick you. That is bullying. Those things affect the psyche of people. It affects how they think, how they act or react. Though we should all... Another thing that is important is emotional intelligence. Everybody, every Nigerian, and if possible, TV stations, you know, you are doing well. You know, you can also carve out maybe a portion. Even on the... I remember, you know, way back there... And then the National Orientation Agency need to help out. In those days when we were young, there are songs that we hear. Those songs shape our behaviors. Yeah. Because you keep hearing, when it was uh, SAP, Structural uh, Adjustment uh, Program, yeah. there are songs that go with it. Andrew, no check out to Nigeria Go Survive. Right. These songs are still in our Nigeria brain. Nigeria Go Survive. Or yes, go survive. You, yeah. you understand. So those, those are ways of molding the value system, building the value system of a society. At the home front too, you know, whether they are Muslims or Christians, they are, uh, you know, inherent ways of building children to be strict. Okay, so... So if we follow, we'll get it. So there's, there's a trend that I also like us to probably trace. You know, when these bullies happen, you see that most times schools tend to take a back seat. When I say schools tend to take a back seat, they tend to look at um, when probably the person who is being bullied, you know, reports you see that they don't want to address the issue. They want to try and curb it and not, let it not get to the social media, let it not get outside. You find such issues out until when the parents of the person who was bullied come out and say, this has been happening. So who do we blame in the case of bullying? You know, because the, the schools are also you know, a major part of it. They don't, want the, you know, they don't want people to talk out. All right, anyway... You know, sometimes some things happen as form of um, lessons for some of us. This one that happened is a lesson. And I want to believe that every school owner should take a cue from this positively by checking. You know, at a point, you know, I advocated that every school should have living policies. And what did I mean by that? Not policies that are dead. A lot of schools are beautiful documents, just like Nigerian society. Beautiful, beautiful documents saying we'll do this, 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 this. Implementation becomes a problem. Let me share what I do. I wish I've shared with a number of schools, and that is make your policies living. We have on our timetable, just like you have subjects, on our calendar, not as subjects. There is a day we call policy day. We're going to talk to children, remind them, okay, policies that have to do with children that they need to know. We may pick one or two in a term. As that keeps coming, the children get aware. And the procedure of, you know, activating it, if you do this, this is what will happen. If you go this route, this is what's going to be, going to be the result. We have days for staff. We have, you know, during our PTF meeting every term, when it is the general PTF meeting, we, one of the items on the agenda is the policy, one of the policies that relate to parents. So with that coming up, everybody is aware. I remember in those days, I'm always connecting these things with what happens in the society. You know, way back, you know, many people don't use seatbelts. Yeah. We just felt it's not. But at a point when the, you know, the campaign became, so, and then people get arrested, you're not using your seatbelt and all of that. Every, everybody became aware. So it is important, and that's why I'm hoping, I'm begging, I'm pleading that the National Orientation Agency need to take this issue of bullying as something to also handle. There should be campaigns on TV stations and radio stations in the different Nigerian languages, even bringing it down to the local government. Some, you know, they did well then. They should wake up and help. Because, you see, when people are aware of something, the tendency of the consistent... Um, um, 
happening of such will reduce drastically. You know what is going to be the consequence. So for instance, those children, when they know that, oh, with this happening, if a teacher comes, and if this, the teachers around also that saw, or the adults that saw that happening, also knows that if you don't do something to address it, something is going to happen to you negatively. I'm sure a number of people are going to adjust, and there will be less record of bullying. You know, just one more question. What are the factors relating to bullying, associated with bullying, and how do we address those factors? As, we have, as I, you know, we started with, factors include parental, you know, background. What are the parents, what do the parents see as the values of bringing up children? And how do they raise their children? Do they not care about, you know, um, how a child responds to even aggression? what the child should do. Parents should specifically train their children or at least get their children to go to where they can get trained. Then school system, you know, should know that this is going to damage the image of, we are in the era where you can't keep any of such information. If it's not a child, it may be a student. I mean, it may be, if it's not a student, it may be a teacher that will capture it and may just be talking with somebody and the thing goes viral. They may not even be able to trace who actually eventually sent it out. Then our government, the National Orientation Agency, I'm pleading, they should also, you know, take their part and do what is right. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you You're for joining welcome. us on the show. Thank you. All right, let's go back to our story on the Suleja Correctional Center. And joining me live on Zoom, of course, is Mr. Chidi. Mr. Chidi, can you hear me now? Loud and clear, yeah. Good morning. Okay, so Mr. Chidi, if you can hear me, um, let's begin with what you think will likely be the potential of getting the remaining 106 escapees back. How do you think that can happen? I don't know if you are here. I can't hear you. Then. Can you hear me? reaction. Yeah. What's happening? Okay, so I was saying that, uh, Mr. Chidi, if you can hear me, how do we, you know, get back these 116 inmates uh, back to the Suleja Correctional Center? Okay, fine. I was, I was just trying to say, uh, by the way, are you hearing me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Very well, then. I was saying that the first step we, 